The god of time, the god of moments, the thousand winds of time, the undying wind, Takoyo Okami, Keros, Istaroth. She has been known by many names throughout time and throughout different regions, but there is still an air of mystery surrounding her. In this video, I'm going to go over what we know, and also theorize about her connections to places and characters we know, such as Venti and Raiden Makoto. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move right on and get into the video. Istaroth is a god who has command over time as well as wind. More so, she is one of the four shining shades of Fanes, the Primordial One. The Primordial One arrived in Tevat a very long time ago, and immediately created the four shades. They then went to war against the seven bishop sovereigns who held dominion over the lands. The war lasted 40 years, and the Primordial One ended up on top. After this, they created the new heavens and earth, alongside the humans that would reside in Tevat. This took about 400 years. The year after humanity was created was known as the year of the Ark's opening, and the year after that was the year of Jubilee. The Primordial Ones seemed to care for humanity, however they had just one rule. This simple rule was to not give in to temptation. Eventually though, another being came, simply known as the second who came. This being restarted the war that had been fought many centuries ago, and during the conflict, the land shattered and many locations fell beneath the surface, including Unkonomiya. Even though the people called for help, Fanes and three of its shades did not respond. The one who did, of course, was Istaroth. In Unkonomiya, the people dared not utter her true name, and thus called her Keros instead. Either way, she was revered in this land for a very long time, and her undying wind was recognized as a major element in the subterranean land, as was the water of the Bethysmal bishops. After countless years, the Archon War began, and during this time, Orobashi fell into Ankonomiya. He would eventually become their god, and would assist the people of Ankonomiya in returning to the surface. After they reached the surface, the worship of Istaroth was forgotten by the people, though the reason why she was forgotten here remains unclear. However, this is not the only time Istaroth has been forgotten by a civilization. The same thing happened in Mondstadt. During the formation of New Mondstadt and after the fall of the God of Storms Decarabian, the people of Mondstadt worshipped both the animal Archon Barbados and the God of Time Istaroth. As I said though, the worship of Istaroth would be forgotten in Mondstadt as well. In this case though, we do have some reasons as to why she would have been forgotten. During the aristocracy period, the Lawrence clan destroyed historical records and relics to suppress knowledge. On top of this, after the fall of the aristocracy, the Great Fire of Fall Equinox destroyed most of the Mondstadt library, leaving at only a sixth of its former size. Anyways, it seems quite evident already that Istaroth has connections to a lot of places throughout Tevat, and she also has some connections to some of the Archons who rule or have ruled over parts of Tevat. So now let's get into Istaroth's legacy, and just how she may fit into Tevat. Two weeks ago, I made a video regarding Barbados, and the potential secrets that he may have. In that video, I went over the connections he may have with Istaroth and Ankonomiya. I'd like to expand on that now, because there are things that I missed, and honestly, with how crazy the lore of this game is, I have still probably missed a few things. Anyways, over those two weeks I have come to realize the importance of Cecilia's. You may be a bit confused about why they're so important, so let me fill you in. Firstly, Cecilia's are heavily tied to Venti. They are his local specialty for ascension, he wears them on his outfit, and according to his interesting things voice line, he considers them the most beautiful flower in all of Tevat. The in-game description for this item is interesting as well. A beautiful flower with a name that suits its appearance. It only grows where harsh winds blow, and is just as intangible as the true heart of an unbound soul. A few things in the description stood out to me. It is said to only grow where harsh winds blow, 
And what is intertwined with wind and lore? Time. Istaros is the god of time as well as wind, so it is fair to say that Cecilias are linked to and represent her. In the wild, Cecilias grow on Star Snatch Cliff, just north of the Thousand Winds Temple, the same temple where the god of time was worshipped in the past. But there is one other place where they used to grow, the greenhouses of Cecilia Garden. The Cecilia flowers that only grow on high cliffs once bloomed in the greenhouses here. The ancient civilization that once enjoyed the scent of Cecilia was lost, and so too was the sea of white flowers. At first you may think, yeah, that's cool and all, but why exactly is that important? Well, I believe that Cecilia Garden is a glimpse into Ankonomia. The way domains work isn't fully understood yet, but when the doors open, a portal similar to the ones that appear at places such as Cape Oath are shown. Some domains may just teleport you to different areas of Tvat. Anyways, there are a few reasons as to why I think Ankonomia and Cecilia Garden are linked in some way. For one, the color scheme and design are very similar. In the Evernight Cycle of Ankonomia, the area is bluish, with yellow crystal lights here and there. In Cecilia Garden, the domain is blue, with yellow flames lighting the area. On top of this, Cecilia Garden has lots of flowing waterfalls and tall structures similar in style to those found in Ankonomia. And to top it all off, the music that plays in Cecilia Garden got a unique remix in Ankonomia, which you can hear when fighting against the twin bathysmal bishops below the Dainishi Mikochi. It all connects, the god of time to Mondstadt, Mondstadt to Cecilia Garden, Cecilia Garden to Ankonomia, and Ankonomia back to the god of time. And I haven't even mentioned the sundials on the Nameless Island and the Thousand Winds Temple. Perhaps the Nameless Island may be where Ankonomia was before it was forced to sink below the surface all those years ago, which is why Cecilia Garden could have a link to Ankonomia. If the land cracked and split open, many things easily could have been moved around like they were nothing. Anyways, I feel like I could go on and on about Istaroth's connections to Mondstadt and Ankonomia, but I also want to quickly touch on one other character who has a link to Istaroth, Raiden Makoto. In the Raiden Shogun's second story quest, we get to learn more about the history of Inazuma, but what interested me the most was the birth of the sacred soccer tree and the seed that started it all. When A planted the seed in Makoto's realm of consciousness, the sacred sakura appeared in the Inazuma of the past. And the one behind it all, of course, was Istaroth. Raiden Makoto enlisted the help of Istaroth to make it so the seed would work the way it did. While, yes, it is confusing how it works, it does show how powerful Istaroth can be. And another quick note. In the cutscene we see when re-entering Raiden Makoto's realm of consciousness, we can briefly see Cecilia's on some shards of glass that fly by the Traveler. And remember how the description of Cecilia said they were just as intangible as the true heart of an unbound soul? Well, during this questline, we received an item called the Dream Sakura, whose description is very interesting as well. You held the single Sakura petal in your hand before leaving Raiden Makoto's realm of consciousness. Its existence is a mystery. It appears no different from ordinary Sakura petals, and there it sits silently in your storage, just like any of the others. But you can no longer touch it, nor can you feel its weight or warmth. When an object loses any of the attributes that one would normally ascribe to it, how can its existence be proven for sure? As you think back on the many sights the petal must have witnessed in the past, a certain guess comes to mind. That which sustains the Sakura petal's existence must be someone's will. But as to who this person is, and whether they are intentionally or unintentionally keeping this petal in existence, neither can be known, nor can you prove whether that willpower is one derived from yearning, trust, or gratitude. Perhaps, when that person's will changes, so too will the Sakura petal disappear. Just to be safe, it might be best to check back from time to time and see if it still exists. This dream Sakura is described to be intangible, much like how Cecilia's are in their description. Not only this, but perhaps Raiden Makoto herself could be seen as the true heart of an unbound soul here, which would further connect her to Istaroth and Cecilia's. Anyways, this also shows that Istaroth has connections to some of the other Archons, and not just Venti, and also solidifies a connection between her and Cecilia's. This makes me believe we'll learn more about her in future updates, so now let's get into the final section of this video, 
the future of the god of time, and what role they will play. As the story of Genshin has continued on, Istaroth has gotten more and more mentions. This is especially evident in both Ankonomiya and the second act of the Raiden Shogun story quest. I believe that in updates to come, she will get more and more mentions. Maybe not as direct as was the case in Raiden's quest, but more of the type of mentions hidden away in books, weapons, or artifacts. I also think that if Mondstadt ever gets expanded some more, we may learn more about her or potentially even meet her. There are a lot of Mondstadt locations that have been mentioned in stories that we just haven't seen yet so I'm more than willing to say that we'll probably get an expansion at some point or another. As for what a story revolving around Istaroth could be about, I think it may be about erosion. It already seems to be a common theme for her. Both civilizations that we know worshipped her have forgotten about her, or in other words, her presence was eroded away from their collective memories. It could also make for good reason for multiple Archons to be together in one place, as erosion seems to be a key part of their stories as well. I guess it's only fitting to say that time will tell how Istaroth's story will play out. There's just so much we don't know, and there's so many questions left unanswered. That's it from me though, I'd love to hear your thoughts below about Istaroth too. That's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.